Hello and welcome to Metropolitan Community Church of Windsor for Sunday, September 20th, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Our first scripture reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jonah. God saw their works that the people of Nineveh turned from their evil ways. God relented of the disaster which God was going to do to them and didn't do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. He prayed to Yahweh and said, Please, Yahweh, wasn't this what I said when I was still in my own country? Therefore I hurried to flee to Tarshish, and I knew that you are a generous and gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and you relent of doing harm. Therefore now, Yahweh, take, I beg you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Yahweh said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of Nineveh, and there made himself a booth, and sat under it in the shade until he might see what would become of the city. Yahweh God prepared a vine and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to deliver him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the vine. But God prepared a worm at dawn the next day, and it chewed on the vine so that it withered. When the sun arose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head, and that he that he fainted, and requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the vine? Jonah said, I am right to be angry, even to death. Yahweh said, you have been concerned for the vine, which you have not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in a night. Shouldn't I be more concerned for Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who can't discern between their right hand and their left, and also much livestock? Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, For the realm of heaven is like someone who was the owner of a vineyard, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for their vineyard. When the owner had agreed with the laborers for one denarius a day, the owner sent them into the vineyard. The owner went out about nine in the morning, and saw others standing in the marketplace. The owner said to them, You also go to the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. Again, the vineyard owner went out about noon and three in the afternoon and did likewise. And around five in the afternoon, the owner went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? And they said to the owner, Because no one has hired us. The owner said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and you will receive whatever is right. Around six in the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about five in the evening came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, but they likewise also received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the owner of the vineyard, saying, These last have spent one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the owner of the vineyard answered them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me for one denarius? Take that which is yours and go your way. 
It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Isn't it lawful for me to do what I want with what I own? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. These are God's words and they are for us, God's people. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture readings are packed with some very interesting things that I would like to talk about. Now, in the course of this, I may express some political opinions, which are my own. Um, so I'm just giving you a heads up, fair warning, if um, my statements appear to be political and they offend your political sensibilities, you have been warned. Poor Jonah. For those of you who may not be familiar with the story, Jonah is an Old Testament prophet who was instructed by God to go and deliver a message of warning and doom to the city of Nineveh. Now, at the time, Nineveh would have been considered to be the, oh, I don't know, would have been the Las Vegas of the world. You know, if it was available, if it was something uh, to do, you could do it in Nineveh. And it was a very wicked city. It was, it was pretty much the Sodom and Gomorrah of its day. And so God had instructed Jonah, you know, go and deliver this message to the city because it's, it's doomed. But Jonah was afraid and Jonah went, oh no, I'm not going to go to Nineveh. They're going to do horrible things to me. So off he went in the opposite direction. He went to a city called Tarshish. Well, he attempted to go to a city called Tarshish and in the process he was on a boat and there was this huge storm and all the sailors were frightened and Jonah realized what was going on and said, guys, this is my fault. Um, throw me overboard uh, because this is God angry at me, not you. So throw me overboard. And so they did. They threw him overboard and the storm stopped. And Jonah, and this is where most people are familiar with this story, Jonah went down in the water and was swallowed by this huge sea creature. Scripture says that he was swallowed by a fish. Some people say he was swallowed by a whale. Doesn't really say, it just says he was swallowed by, he was swallowed by something big in, in the sea. And he spent three days in the stomach of this creature, whatever it was. And he finally came to his senses and he repented and God made the creature spit Jonah, bleh, spit Jonah back up onto the beach. And conveniently on the beach just outside Nineveh. So Jonah goes off to Nineveh and he does what God instructed him. He preaches to Nineveh, calls them to repent. You know, and here's where the story picks up in today's scripture reading. Jonah did what he was told, finally. He preached to the city of Nineveh told them what was going to happen. And you know what? They listened. They actually listened to him. And they turned from their evil and wicked ways. And they repented and they did animal sacrifices. And the king of Nineveh ordered everyone to mourn and wear sackcloth and ashes and do everything that they normally would do when they were repenting and trying to tell everyone how sorry they were for something they'd done. And God forgave them. God decided, well, you know what? They listened. They're cleaning up their act. They're going, you know, they're, they're, they're doing what's right. So maybe they're not going to get destroyed. Maybe they're not doomed after all. And God spared them. Well, that didn't sit well with poor old Jonah. Jonah threw a hissy fit. He threw a tantrum. 
he was pissed off that God didn't destroy Nineveh like God said they were going to do. So he went out. There's a mountain just outside Nineveh. He went up there, set up himself a little tent, a little booth, sat down and decided to watch and see what was going to happen. Well, God sent, God made a vine grow to give Jonah some shade. I guess maybe he just built some kind of a trellis thing. I don't know. But anyway, God sent him a vine. And it gave Jonah lots of shade, and Jonah felt good, and I said, okay, I'm going to get to watch the city blow up. Yay! Well, it didn't happen. Overnight, God sent a worm, and the worm ate at the base of the vine, and the vine withered and died. So Jonah woke up, and again, he was upset and carrying on like a little baby. And Jonah said, and God said, well, why are you so angry? Why are you so, first of all, why are you so angry that Nineveh was spared? And now why are you so angry about the vine? They did what they were they did what they were supposed to do, Jonah. What you called them to do. They you called them out of evil and into righteousness. You did what you I wanted you to do. You should be happy. Why are you so angry? And that's where the story of Jonah ends on. And the gospel story kind of parallels that. The story of the, vi of the vineyard owner who decided at six in the morning to go out and hire some people to work in his vineyard. And then later in the day, around nine, and then at noon, he goes out to the, to the, the employment center and gets a few more people to go out and work in the vine. And then he goes back at three in the afternoon and then again at five and gets people you know, to, to go and work in the field. And each one of these people, from the pe person he hired, at, they hired at six, to the person they hired at five in the afternoon, they were all told that they would be paid one denarius, whatever that is in modern currency, I don't know, but let's just consider a day's wages, whatever that may be. And so... Six o'clock in the evening comes around, the end of the day, the landowner, the landowner, the owner of the vineyard says to the manager, pay everybody what I agreed to pay them. So they did. Starting with the people who were hired at five in the afternoon, going all the way back to the people who were hired at six in the morning. Each one of them got a denarius, got a full day's wages. Well, the people who were hired at six in the morning, they thought that was just so unfair because they worked all day and yet these people who were hired in the afternoon only worked a couple of hours. Some of them only worked one hour and yet they got a full day's wages. That's not fair. And the owner of the vineyard reminded them all that the owner paid them what they had agreed, what they had agreed to, a contract to... You know, to borrow one of the Ferengi rules of acquisition. A contract is a contract is a contract. Don't ask me which number. Maybe I'll look it up and put it up in the thing. I don't know. Uh, but the point was, the landowner gave them what they had agreed to. And I think the overarching story here is that sometimes life isn't fair. It's not about what I deserve. It's not about what I'm owed. It's about what God gives us. And God gives us God's love, and it's for everybody. Even the people who don't deserve it. Let's put this in a modern context. What if God, what if there was a Jonah in the world today? And God told this Jonah to go to Washington, D.C. and go to the, to the Republican Party and go to the White House and say, repent because U.S., you're going to go down the tubes if you don't. Turn from your wicked and evil ways. And what do you think would happen if they did? <gasps> they actually listened to this modern day Jonah and turned from their evil ways. 
Wouldn't that be so much better than watching the U.S. disintegrate? Wouldn't that be so much better? And here's the thing that's so wonderful about it is that God's love is for them too. God's love was for the wicked people of Nineveh. God's love is for the Republican Party of the United States. God's love is for those who are in the White House. God's love is for the Democrats. For those of us in Canada, God loves the NDP just as much as God loves the Conservatives and even the Liberals who are in power. The point is, God loves us all. And what are we going to do when God calls us to work to make God's love a reality in the world. I hope and pray that, yes, we do. We go out in the world to not just preach, but to be God's love in the world. And maybe the story of Jonah and the story of the, of the uh, workers in the vineyard are a reminder for us that we need to be prepared for what God will do. It might not be what we want. The bad people might not get what they deserve, but they will get all the love of God, the same love of God that is ours and can never be taken from us. And before we go thinking that we might be so high and mighty, remember God's love is for us too. We need it just as much as anybody else. So let's remember that too, Jonas of the world. That we need God's love too, just as much as the people of Nineveh whatever the Nineveh is in your world. In all God's many names, amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Let us pray. We pray for the church and its mission. Make your church ready to lose its life for your sake. Unite it in service, sustain it in suffering, and let its love for others be genuine. Empowering God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth and its well-being. Make us mindful of the gifts we have labored, you have labored to give us and inspire us to commit ourselves to their care. Generous God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and their leaders. Overcome evil with good. Show us how to live peaceably with all. Teach us how to love our enemies. Sovereign God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in any need. Provide for the hungry, rescue the persecuted. Bless those who advocate for fair and safe working conditions and for just and livable wages. God of justice, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community and its ministry. Move us to persevere in prayer, to extend hospitality to strangers, to rejoice with those who rejoice, and to weep with those who weep. Compassionate God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for all the saints who now rest from their labors. Keep us in union with them until we are joined around your throne. Everlasting God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Who taught us to pray. 
O God, our divine parent, may your presence be ever revered. May your peace and justice dwell among us. May your love and compassion live within and between us. Nourish us daily with the necessities of life, sustenance for our bodies and inspiration for our spirits. And may the forgiveness we give be that which we receive, the kindness we show be that which we perceive. Lead us on virtuous paths and distance us from evil. For your world is our world and your reign our reign, then, now, and always. May it be so. God is with us. Let us lift up our hearts. Yes, lift them up to God. Let us pray. Most loving God, we know that you are with us wherever we are, no matter how we come together. We remember now how you took the bread, blessed it after the manner of your people, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you. We remember, too, how after the meal you took the cup, blessed it after the manner of your people, and gave it to your friends, saying, Take this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for everyone. Whenever you do this, remember me. We remember, too, the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Hallelujah. Loving God, we give thanks for the opportunity to meet, for we know that wherever two or more gather in your name, even virtually, you are with us. Be with us now as we wait out this trying time, so that when we can get back together, we can be your love and your light in a world that so desperately needs it. In all your many and wonderful names. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. With the situation around the pandemic, restrictions which change daily, at this point we're not 100% sure when we will meet again in person. But until that time, May the God who has created us, Christ who saves us, and the Holy Spirit, our comfort and our strength, be with us all until we can meet again. And all God's children said,